Very quick tips and tricks for this video. If you want to play a zero cost card, you still need a sphere match. So you can't play Faux Hammer unless you somehow have access to tactics. All right, on to the video. All right, let's go. Let's play the first quest in the Lost Realm, part of the Agmar Awakened cycle. Stop the war party, intruders in Chetwood, 1A. We're going to put Aerion in play. We're going to add an Orc war party to the staging area. We're going to add a location to the staging area. And then we're going to give the encounter deck a shuffle. Side 1B. It's a one quest card quest. It's 30 quest points. Enemies do not make engagement checks. At the end of the refresh phase, we got to raise our threat by one for each enemy in the staging area. If Iarion leaves play, we lose. All right, the Orc War Party. Pretty tough. 40 engagement. He's a three threat, six attack, three defense, six hit point orc. He cannot have attachments. While he's in the staging area, enemies in the staging area cannot take damage. And then we cannot win the game if one of these guys are in play. So he pretty much shuts down any traps and staging area attacks type decks. You can't count on those working. All right, I'm going to add Rugged Country. So it's two threat, three progress. It gets plus two threat if we're going to a side quest. I Arion, who I'm not sure I'm pronouncing right. He has willpower, attack, and defense of X, where X is the number of quest cards in play. First player gets him. Response, after a side quest is revealed from the encounter deck, ready Iarion. If Iarion leaves play, we lose the game. He's a much better ally than Nalir the Jerk. All right, we are bringing Frodo Baggins. He's a hobbit. He's spirit, seven threat, two, one, two, two. Response, after Frodo would take any amount of damage, you can cancel that damage and raise your threat by that amount instead. So you can't split that up. It's either all or nothing. You either take all the damage or you take all the threat. All right, I'm also bringing Gimli. 11 threat, tactics, 2, 2, 2, 5. Gimli gets plus one attack for each damage on him. That is how I'm planning on taking out those orc war parties. I need to get a citadel plate on him and at least one weapon. I am also bringing Gandalf for the first time in the progression series. So Gandalf is 14 threat. He better be good. 3335. This is the awesome alt art version we got with the 2020 fellowship kit. He's Astari. And then you play with the top card of your deck face up as if it was in your hand. And then when Gandalf is playing the top card of your deck, he is considered to have the printed leadership, lore, tactics, and spirit icons and you're allowed to play that top card limit once per phase. Okay, I'm using my custom tracker, resources across the top, my 32 starting threat across the bottom. How am I going to beat this quest? Well, this quest isn't overly hard. It's not a pushover by any means. You definitely can lose against this quest, but you can have some fun with your deck building. You don't need a very specific deck to beat this. So I decided to bring a deck that I'm planning on having some fun with. I'm hoping to get Citadel Plate on Gimli. I need a Wizard Pipe on Gandalf. I'm going to be moving cards in and out of my hands. I should be discarding cards from the top of my deck and hopefully getting benefits from discarding those cards. And uh, technically my top card should already be face up. Once Gandalf's in play, that top card of my deck should be face up. Let's take a look at my opening hand. I play tested this deck quite a bit, so I know a good opening hand if I see one. Okay, Expert Treasure Hunter. I need that on top of my deck to put it in play because it's lore. And what I can do is if the attached hero quests successfully, I name a card type, discard the top card of my deck, and I can take it into my hand if that card was the correct type. And I will know that for sure. All right, Ziggy Miner. That's going to help me get some money. A Blade of Gondolin. Another Expert Treasure Hunter. A uh, Goblin Cleaver. Flame of Arnor. That's an attack boost and a ready. That's not a good opening hand. I did not get Stargazer. I did not get Citadel Plate or Wizard Pipe. So there's a lot of cards I'm hoping to see, and I didn't see any of them. I could have actually seen what the top card of my deck was. That should have been face up. But I think even if it was any of those cards, I still would have taken a mulligan. That opening hand was not that great. So let's try this again and see if I can get a little better luck. Okay, taking the top six. Like I said, I should be flipping that card up. But hey, okay, Citadel Plate, there we go. So Gimli's gonna get plus four hit points with that thing. Let's see what else we get. Okay, there's Bilbo, perfect. He helps me find the pipe. So when he enters play, I get to search my deck for a pipe. So that's great, perfect. Uh, a weapon, uh, another weapon, Arwen, she's a quester and boosts defense. And then my single copy of Treebeard that I put in the deck. So he costs four neutral resources. But he's a beast, and then he collects resources every round and can ready himself. 
but he comes into play exhausted. Ah, uh, excellent starting hand. There we go. All I need now is uh, a stargazer. If I found a stargazer, I would really be able to make this thing work. All right, so let's flip over that top card. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was great. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, well, she comes into my hand, and my neck, it's the freaking pipe. Can you believe that? All right, so the next two cards were Stargazer and the pipe. So now I don't even need to get Bilbo in. Um, I'll be able to get Stargazer in this round, and we're going to be rocking and rolling. This is going to be a lot of fun. So I'll use Gimli's resource to put the wizard pipe in play. You have to put it on an Astari character, and then you exhaust the pipe to swap a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. So that... Uh, makes for some very fun combos and you can have a lot of fun with this card so we're gonna add that wizard pipe to Gandalf and he's gonna let me do some swapping let's see what the next top card is all right it's uh, northern tracker can't afford him yet but what I'm going to do is trigger the wizard's pipe and I'm gonna swap that northern tracker with my Imladris stargazer so let's exhaust the pipe and we're gonna do the switch Okay, so now Gandalf is allowed to pay for the card on top of my deck, and he's considered to have the spirit resource icon when he does that. So with Frodo's resource, the Stargazer can now be put into play. I'm going to put that token on Gandalf to remind me I've already used his ability this phase. And then now let's exhaust the Stargazer and peek at the next five cards. You can see the Gladium's Greeting ended up on top. Ooh, okay, there's a card you want to discard. So if you discard that card off the top of your deck, the Hidden Cache, you get two resources on a Hero's Resource Pool. So I definitely want to be able to discard that card off the top of my deck. And then, oh my gosh, it's just really good cards. So well-equipped, this lets me discard the top two cards off of my deck, and then I can attach one of those two cards to a dwarf if able so now with the wizard pipe I can put the citadel plate on top of my deck and use that well equipped to get it on Gimli for free and then I got two exhaust a weapon to do awesome things cards so yeah everything is falling into place this is working really well the only card I'm missing is a uh, Ziggy Miner all right so I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do this I want to know which card I'm going to draw and then which card is going to be on top of my deck. So I arranged it like that and now we're actually going to start questing. So I'm sending everybody. Since enemies do not make engagement checks, I know I will not be engaging an enemy. So I am sending eight, I'm up against five, and I get weight of responsibility. When revealed, reveal one encounter card for each quest card in play. Well that's great timing for that because there's only one quest card in play and oh god okay outlying homestead i was really hoping not to see this for a while it's only two threat but it's eight progress doomed one and then i can't reduce my threat while it's in staging and then to travel there i got to reveal an encounter card it just looks like a nice little cabin i don't get it it's so nasty well i definitely don't want to travel there i have to do doomed one i make a progress which is pretty surprising but I can't travel there because I'll get location locked. I need to try to clear locations, and I'm going to struggle at first here to even make two or three progress around. So that's going to have to just stay in the staging area, and now I can't reduce my threat, which is how I have lost during playtesting with this deck. I've got location locked, and I wasn't able to drop my threat, so I threaded out. Okay, so I had to raise my threat by an additional one because I had one enemy still in staging, and now we are in the next round. And, I, yep, I'm going to use my Wizard's Pipe to swap Goblin Cleaver with my Citadel Plate. And now I'm going to play Well Equipped, so I'm going to discard the top two cards of my deck. And then if there's an attachment that can go on a Dwarf, I can put it on the Dwarf. And so I discard that Citadel Plate and the Hidden Cache. So the Hidden Cache gets me two resources on somebody, so I'll put that on Frodo. And then the Citadel Plate gives Gimli plus four hit points and that's gonna go right on him so that was perfect that is the ultimate combo achievement unlocked right there with what I just did alright so my top card is a faux hammer which I should be able to play during the combat phase off the top of my deck because I am playing a weapon I'm gonna give Gimli plus one attack and then after you attack an enemy you can deal a damage to that enemy but I don't think that's going to trigger because I have a 
master plan here. Let's get our Wind and Dolmiel in play. She'll be boosting someone's defense, I guess, and questing for two, more importantly. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm sending eight against five, and we reveal the borders of Breelan. So that's going to make me return enemies to the staging area if it's in the staging area. But I actually make a progress, which is pretty good. I haven't had to raise my threat yet, which is uh, nice, to be honest. All right, let's optionally engage the Orc War Party. It's attacking for six. I am not defending it. And there's no shadow, so I was just happy that shadow didn't send him back to the staging area. That's about the only thing I was worried about there. Gimli is going to take six damage, and now he is attacking for nine. Thanks to that weapon, and that's enough. So we kill the Orc War Party. That was my strategy on how to take out those guys. And then we can trigger Foe Hammer and draw three cards. So that was how I decided I wanted to beat these Orc War Parties, just to have a powered-up Gimli. All right, Goblin Cleaver does three damage to an Orc if you exhaust a weapon. Uh, Gladium's Greeting is going to drop my threat and another Stargazer. My top card is a Blade of Gondolin, so now I'm going to use the Stargazer. And we're going to peek at the top five cards and arrange them in a way that makes sense. So we got another hidden cache. Okay, that's good. Uh, another citadel plate. Don't need that. Another foe hammer. And then the flame of Arnor, you add it to the victory display. Discard the top card of your deck to ready an Astari character. And they get plus attack where the attack value is equal to the card's cost that you discarded. So I arranged my five cards like so. And now we're going to raise our threat. Everyone's going to ready, we're going to get our resources, and we're going to go into the next round. So let's draw that Flame of Arnor. My top card is the Blade of Gondolin. Gimli has two restricted attachments, so he can't have any more. But I am going to put that weapon on Gandalf. I don't know if Gandalf will ever attack. I just want another weapon to exhaust, because I have cards that make me exhaust weapons, and I just need weapons in play. All right, looking at my hand, I don't really want to get Treebeard in right now. He's too expensive. I'm going to get this Northern Tracker. Treebeard costs the same, but he comes in exhausted. And right now, I need somebody who can do stuff. So I am going to put in that Northern Tracker after using the Wizard's Pipe to put him on top of my deck. And then, of course, the Citadel Plate is the next card. But now the Northern Tracker, when he's questing, he places a progress on locations in the staging area. You can definitely get location locked in this quest without a doubt, especially with that outlying homestead. It's just ridiculous. So let's send these characters on the quest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's send nine. We're currently up against four. I'm just I just want to clear the active. That's my big goal. And then we get another location. It's three threat. And I'm remembering there the northern tracker should have placed progress. So yeah. Lots of location. So I added three threat, but I make two progress, which is exactly what I needed to clear that. Now, I can't travel to the location I just revealed because that makes me engage an enemy to travel there. I, I guess there's no better time to travel to the outlying homestead than right now. I got to reveal an encounter card to do it, but I don't think there's a better time to do it. So let's use Stargazer before we travel there and just see what's coming and kind of get my thoughts together there we go okay Ziggy was one more card down so now I can really start generating some money and I can I can do pretty good so this is how I'm going to arrange my deck I'm putting the Citadel plate on top we're going to travel to the outlying homestead to travel there I got to reveal a card and the card I reveal is um, X is the number of quest cards in play if there's only one quest card in play it surges so that sucks. Okay, so that's a one threat. And then, oh boy, horrible art and horrible card. Sudden assault. If the total willpower of characters committed to the quest is greater than the total threat in the staging area, each enemy makes an attack against you from the staging area. That's terrible. But we are not in the quest phase, so there is no willpower committed. So we go to the next sentence, which says, if no attacks were made this way, we need to find an orc war party and add it to the staging area. This effect cannot be canceled. All right, so let's do a search and oh, bottom of the deck. There we go. Alrighty, give the deck a shuffle. And yeah, so now another orc party is in play and we're going to have to deal with that. All right, so we're going to engage it, of course. We're going to deal a shadow card 
And you know what? I have two goblin cleavers. They each do three damage to an orc. And I'm just going to exhaust two weapons and kill it. Even though Gimli could kill it, I don't really want to raise my threat by six if Frodo defends. And I was also worried about a shadow that could have kicked it back up to the staging area. So one of the things I found when I was playing this quest to get ready for the video is don't let enemies attack if at all possible. Guaranteed, if you let them attack, their shadow will put them back up in the staging area. That's just Murphy's Law. It's just the way it's going to go. Okay, so we weathered that storm pretty good. I'm going to draw that citadel plate. And now the Ziggy Miner is on top of my deck. And I have Gandalf's resource and I have Frodo's resource so I can put Ziggy into play. You can exhaust the Zigil Miner and name a number and then you discard the top two cards of your deck. And each card that matches that number with the cost of the card, you can add a resource to a hero. So Hidden Cache is perfect for this because when it gets discarded, you get two resources from discarding the Hidden Cache. Is it Cache or Cache? I really don't know. So now I think I'm going to use Stargazer, even though I just used it, but now I'm one card deeper and see if I can get a better card discarded than the one that I currently have lined up. So the next card down was Elf Helm. So that's great tech against this quest. So I decide to arrange it like this. We're going to put Faux Hammer back on top of the deck, and then I'm going to use the Wizard Pipe, and I'm going to put a card from my hand that I want to discard, and that's going to be that Citadel Plate that I drew. I think I could have probably planned that Stargazer better when I did it last round. It's just, it's hard to do the mental gymnastics to get it all right. Okay, so I said four, so one card cost four, and then the Hidden Cache was discarded, and that gives me two resources. I'm going to put all those resources on Frodo, so he now had three more resources added to his resource pool. And since I don't have the outlying homestead in the staging area, I will play this Galadrium's Greeting and drop my threat by six while I can. So I have found that if you can drop your threat by a massive amount at least once with this deck, you're probably not going to threat out. But if you don't draw any of that threat reduction, uh, you're in trouble. All right, let's send to the quest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then Northern Tracker is starting to place some progress on these locations. Eventually they'll get cleared out. All right, so let's commit to the quest. I'm going to send nine, and we're up against six. And the card we get is, okay, once again, weight of responsibility. So that's basically a surge one, because there's only one quest card. And we get surprising speed. we got to return an enemy to the staging area. If we can't, it's doomed one and surge. Okay, that sucks. I hate doomed. I actually thought about putting Keys of Orthanc in this deck because there's so much doom in this quest. And then we get an Agmar Orc. So when revealed, we either got to reveal an additional card or discard an ally. Well, I definitely don't want another card. Looking at the allies I have, I think I'll discard Stargazer because I have another one in hand. So Stargazer is now gone. And I've added two threats, so I only make one progress on a location that has eight needed. Yuck. Alrighty, so let, let's engage this Agmar Orc. He's attacking for two. I am not going to defend it. And, okay, we get the Orc War Party. So if he had gotten an attack boost, I would have raised my threat with Frodo's ability. But since Gimli can handle two additional damage, I will just put it on Gimli. Gimli swings back for, what the heck is he attacking for now? Nine? That's incredible. Then one additional damage from that axe. So... 10 really okay foe hammer uh, i get unexpected courage elf helm which as long as he's ready i don't have to raise my threat from under questing or doomed or he's he's good tech against this quest but i only put one copy of him in this deck i don't need him it's just nice to get him into play okay so we're gonna draw the handmaiden so when she enters play she drops your threat by one that's pretty good uh, my top card is the wizard's pipe so i don't need that and I really want to get the Stargazer back in play so I can make sure Ziggy works and everything. So I'm going to do the Wizard's Pipe that I have in play to swap the top card. So now Gandalf's resource can be used as a spirit. And Stargazer comes into play. And my top card is this Well-Equipped that I have no use for. So let's look at my top five. All right, so I got three two-cost allies and I have Well-Equipped. I really need to make sure I'm not discarding all of my three cost, my uh, two willpower allies. So I'm being pretty careful. So Stargazer and Well-Equipped are going to get discarded to the Zigil Miner. I'm going to get one resource for that. 
I'm going to put this Quick Strike on top of my deck. So that lets you declare an attack to an eligible enemy. And then looking at my hand, yeah, I just really, I don't want to play Treebeard right now. I want to save a Tactics resource or Gandalf's resource so I can play that Quick Strike if I need to. So I'm still, I'm really not sending a lot of willpower, but the Northern Tracker is chipping away at these locations. So that's, that's pretty good. All right, so let's commit to the quest nine against six and we get the Orc Rearguard. It's an encounter side quest. It's three quest points. No more than three progress can be placed on the current quest each round. And then when Orc Rearguard is chosen as the current quest, you have to reveal an additional card at the end of the staging step. Okay, so that readies Ierian, and he gets plus one willpower because of that. So I still don't clear the outlying homestead. So the way encounter side quest works is at the beginning of the quest phase, you choose which quest you're going to be now questing against. So when I decide I want to try to clear that orc rearguard, I will declare that that is the quest I am questing against. Okay, so Stargazer lets me find there's some willpower. There's my expert treasure hunter. Lots of willpower. Okay, so I got three allies that are going to boost my willpower. So I know now that um, an Aether Swordsman is coming into play. So I don't mind discarding a couple of those two willpower allies now that an Aether Swordsman is coming in. So I'm going to draw the Aether Swordsman. Expert Treasure Hunters on top of my deck. So I'm going to use Gandalf's ability to play that. So as long as I quest successfully, I can trigger the Expert Treasure Hunter. My top card is now a two-cost ally. I will use Ziggy and discard the top two cards. Those both cost two, so I get two more resources. Quick Strike is once again on top of my deck. I am going to play these two two cost, two willpower allies. So the Handmaiden is going to drop my threat by one, and Aether Swordsman is currently questing for two. So I'm adding some willpower finally. And we should be able to make a lot of progress this round because the Northern Tracker is going to be clearing locations out of the staging area. So yeah, this, this, was a, this was a good round. So let's go against that encounter side quest. I'm going to send 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm sending 14. The Northern Tracker clears these two locations. So they're gone. And I'm just up against this one location, and we get a three-threat enemy, and then I have to reveal a second card, and we get another encounter side quest. This boosts all the orcs, and then I have to find an orc and put it in play engaged with me. Okay, so the orc I'm going to find is this Agmar orc because he has a when revealed, so it's nice to grab him so that doesn't trigger. So I'm going to be engaged with this guy. So I only added three threat. No, I'm sorry, four threat, because that encounter side quest is going to boost that orc. So I'm up against seven, actually. But that's still enough to clear the outlying homestead and put three progress on the orc rear guard. So that goes in the victory display. I Arion is one less to all of his stats. And then if I remember, I can trigger the expert treasure hunter. Let's see if I remember. It's always hard to remember that card. It triggers after you've quested successfully, so I should have done it already. All right. So I traveled to that other location, and now I remember, so I should have triggered that a while ago. So basically, when you quest successfully, you name a type, so I will say event, and what do you know? It was an event, and I get to take that card into my hand. If you have a hidden cache and wizard pipe, you can do a fun trick where you just keep recycling the hidden cache with expert treasure hunter and wizard pipe and get two resources. But um, you do use your wizard pipe every round when you do that. So uh, give and take if that's a good plan for you. All right, so I'm going to engage that guy. And we are now engaged with two enemies. And I need to decide how I want to handle this. They're all attacking for plus one. So I am going to use Wizard Pipe right now, and I'm going to put this axe on top of my deck. And then I'm going to play Flame of Arnor. It costs one, and then I get to ready Gandalf, and he's going to get plus one attack when I discard the top card in my deck, because that card cost one. And my plan here is I want to have one of these attacks be defended, and then based on what happens, I can hopefully use Quick Strike to kill the other orc, and then I will attack back and kill the orc I defend, but it doesn't work because the stupid shadow says plus one and then return it to the staging area. So that didn't work. 
I probably should have waited to do that Flame of Arnor until after I defended, but honestly, it doesn't matter because I'm all set for combat. I'm actually digging for the Ethier Swordsman, so I'm just trying to go through my deck and dig down until I can find these guys. But that's all right, so that orc is back up in staging, and now I'm just going to use Gandalf to defend instead of that Quick Strike since he's ready. So Gandalf will defend, he's boosted by Arwen, and then attacking enemy gets plus one. So this enemy actually attacked for five. I'm going to get the damage right here in a minute. I remember that these orcs were boosted. So Gimli swings back and kills it. I have a weapon that's ready on him, so I can use Foe Hammer. And I will draw three cards. I get another Flame of Anar. There's an Aether Swordsman. And then there's uh, some Threat Reduction. Okay, so then the top card is a weapon. And this is where I remember that since that orc is in staging, I need to raise my threat by an additional one at the end of the round. And then here's me remembering that those orcs actually hit a little harder. So I'm just getting my damage up and correct. Okay, so I raised my threat because of that orc. And then I raise it again for the end of the round. And then we're going to use Stargazer before I draw my card. And then there you can see I have a side quest in my deck. That's a gather information. Let's you find any card once you clear it. So let's put that quick strike back on top of my deck. And I'm going to draw it into my hand. And then I'm going to put that gather information on top. And I'm going to say zero with the Ziggy because I have no use in playing that card. So I'm going to get one resource there, putting it on Frodo. And now it's just a matter of can I get willpower in. So Gandalf's going to pay for this handmaiden. She drops my threat. And then Frodo has some resources, so he's going to put in an Aether Swordsman. And so now each of my Aether Swordsmen are questing for three. And this is how the deck worked during playtesting this deck against the quest. I just slowly built the board state, and then I basically make like 25 progress in two turns. So I am questing for a lot, and we get... Oh Lord, what's this? The Sudden Assault! Okay, so... Uh, my willpower is greater than the current threat in the staging area, so I'm going to get attacked by each enemy in the staging area. So he's attacking for three. I'm going to take it undefended. My threat is perfectly fine. So, uh, good. Glad to see that card go away. All right, so three damage I apply to Frodo, and then Frodo is going to use his response and raise my threat by three to cancel that damage. And let's take a look at how much I quested for. So it's three against, what is that, 20? So I make 17. So that's a lot. And I was definitely questing against the main quest. I don't really care about this encounter side quest that's out there. So we have now made 16 of the 30 progress. There's no locations. And let's engage this little wimpy orc guy. So he is attacking for three again. But there's no question what I'm going to do. I don't want him going back up to staging. I'm just going to spend a tactics resource and do quick strike with Gimli and kill this guy. So he's dead. I don't want to have to worry about him bouncing back up. And uh, it doesn't look like there would have been a shadow anyway. That's all right. So now we just need to make 14 progress and we're going to win. So as long as we don't reveal an orc war party, which we would have to kill, we will have this. So let's do one more stargazer here at the end. Try to find that last Aether Swordsman. There he is. So I almost went through the entire deck. I'm going to range my deck like so. Aether Swordsman goes on top. We're going to go into the next round. Everybody gets some resources. I'm going to draw that card into my hand. Top card is a hidden cache. I'm going to say zero for the Ziggy. Discard the hidden cache. And another zero cost card. So that's a total of four resources I just gained. They're all going to go on Frodo. And then I'm going to use the Wizard's Pipe to put the Aether Swordsman that I drew on top of my deck. So Gandalf can help pay for him. So Gandalf spends a spirit resource. Frodo spends one of his five. The Aether Swordsman comes in. Now they're all questing for four. So that's 12 willpower with just the three of them. And then it really doesn't matter what card I play here. I could have played Treebeard, but he's exhausted. So let's just put in another Northern Tracker because I can. And yeah, we're going to quest for an absolute ton. So 12 from the Aether Swordsman. And then I have three allies each questing for two. Uh, Northern Trackers are one each. 
Aerion is two, Frodo is two, Gandalf is three. So when it's all said and done, I believe I'm questing for 27 against zero, and we get an outlying homestead, so doomed one, but that's only two threat, and I needed to make 14, so I definitely made enough. There's no orc war parties in play, so that is a victory, and that was a very fun deck to take against this quest. I had a lot of fun with this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Bye-bye.